Okay, everybody out there in Everglades Bicycle Club world, uh, we're here at Patches again, and we're here with Kyle. Kyle is one of the founders of, of Patches, and like me, she hates cameras. But, uh, <laughs> Big she, time. <laughs> but she's doing this because, uh, well, she knows better than most folks how important uh, the work of Patches is. So uh, if I can get in front of a camera, uh, Kyle can too. Mm -hmm. All right, so... Thanks, uh, Juan. I'll remember that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Kyle, uh, thank you for for showing me around and uh, I'm, I'm really bowled over by, by what I've seen today and the dedication and, and the children and, and how even a lot of the children that are what for all objective purposes is a really difficult situation have a smile on their face and the, their eyes are there you know, they, they just happen to be you know they have physical difficulties or other difficulties but I'm really bowled over by what I've seen today. Um, I wanted to ask you, in the years that Patches, um, first of all, how long has Patches been in existence? Um, since 2000. Right. Is and, when I, and it took us five years to get our initial um, business up and running. Right. And and that's, and you were one of the five founders, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, this started out as a project. I was getting my bachelor's at University of Miami, and this was actually um, a, a need survey that I did for community nursing. So you did it as part of a class? I, like did, a, it, I did it as part of a class, and then my last semester they t I, they um, looked at my project and said, would you like to do that as a capstone? And I said, absolutely. And what's so a capstone? A capstone is the project that you get when you get, you know, it's like your final project when you before you graduate. Okay. And um, uh, actually Donna Shalala has been here several times, and one of her things is that she's so impressed is because this was the only student project that she ever knew that went to fruition. Okay. So pretty cool. So huh? you were a student. I was. And and it became your life. It did. Okay. So uh -huh. that's amazing. So <laughs> since two thousand and five patches have been in existence. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. And and what do you think um, maybe I should get smacked for asking an obvious question, but what what's the effect that patches has had on the community or or if, let me ask you another way. If patches didn't exist fill in the blank. Um, where would these kids go? Right. Uh, they would either be trapped in their homes, trapped in their hospitals, mm -hmm. um, or in, a, in uh, you know, an institution. Because some of our children are severely ill, as you as you can right. tell, and um, they would not be able to be in into any kind of community. These kids can't go to school. They can't, you know. So right. it, it's hospital or nursing home. Okay. And and that's because of the. Uh, PPC, the extended it, care. Right, right. So it's, pedi it's prescribed pediatric extended care. They, in order to get here, they have to be physician um, uh, um, ordered. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And of course, now my cell phone um, blanked out on me. But what, what, what do you think makes patches so unique? We take any child, regardless of the ability to pay, and I think that's what sets us aside because there are children out there whose parents have commercial insurance mm -hmm. that were not recognized in their panel so their children would be here for free. Um, we have illegals, many illegals that work in our fields. What do you do with their kids? Right. Uh, you know, I, I'm sorry, these are these are children. It's not their fault that their parents are here and we have to take care of them. Right, or it's not their fault that they're, uh, they happen to fall outside the area of coverage of their insurance policy. Absolutely.